And uh, he says, ah, oh, hold on. And I'm like, okay. He's digging through his glove box. And he's digging through his glove box, digging through his glove box. And I'm thinking, I don't know what to say. I have literally nothing. I'm not interested in his car. I'm not interested in his house. I'm not, I'm like, <laughs> what do you start this conversation with? All I knew is that God said, just, just step up. This isn't a big step. It shouldn't be hard for you, Reed. Okay. So, eventually, he got to me. He's like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> I said, how do you like Iowa? And he said, oh, I love Iowa. And I said, well, that's good. <laughs> and, and then I said, I'm from Wyoming. And he was like, oh, okay. And basically, God kept giving me little conversation pieces. Nothing spiritual yet. And then uh, he said, well, you're sticking around all weekend, right? I said, no, actually, I've got to get back. He's like, oh, what? I said, well, i got to speak on Sunday. And so I got to head back early. My fellow says, we'll be here. And he said, oh, speak where? And I said, at church. And he's like, oh, really? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pastor of, of the Lord and of Jesus. And he's like, oh, that's awesome, me too. And I said, wonderful. And then it hit me. Tragedy. I just saw tragedy on him. I just said, I know this is going to sound random, but is there anything I can pray for before I head back inside? I, I love to pray for people. Is there any tragedy in life or anything going on? In September, his grandson had gotten killed in a lawnmower accident out on a farm mowing around a lake and actually gotten killed by the lawnmower, rolled back on him and, under, and pinned him. And I mean, the tragedy of tragedies of this guy. So his kids' lives are devastated. And they raise their family in the spiritual world and they're, they're all questioning God. You know what I mean? They're all having that legitimate question like, God, wow. give me the reason. God, give me that reason. And I felt clear as day. God said, I'm not, I might not ever tell them the specific reason on this. What I want you to do is I want you to let them know that I love him and that they have to trust me like a father and that we don't always know why the father does what he does. Even as kids. Kids don't get it why their fathers do what they do. But just tell him I love him and pray peace and love into his life. <laughs> I, just, so I just start talking to him and now the guy is like starting to tear up and He's telling me all the stories of all the struggle. Now, he's trying to hold his family together because he's kind of a grandfather, um, trying to hold the kids spiritual. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. Wow. So I just prayed into his life. That's awesome. I don't know. Who got wrecked more? I don't know, man. I don't know. It just, it just blew me away. I've been having more and more moments like that. Power and love got me to step out of my shell a little bit. Uh, mm. What else do we got, testimonies? I feel like this is an important moment here. What else do we got? What's God doing? Go ahead. This didn't happen this week. Okay. 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 But you shared that, and I think the importance of actually listening to that is very, very important. Because I listened, but I wasn't specific enough. And I heard specifically. So I went to the restroom. We were on vacation. I went to the restroom. And, um this man was limping and it could have been his leg, it could have been his ankle or whatever, but God said hey, you need to go out and pray for that man's hip, and I'm like, oh no <laughs> like this is not <laughs> worth <it." laughs> well, I'm all places we were in Vegas okay, okay. So, right. yeah, so be another stranger on the street walking up to somebody, right? yeah, so, <laughs> yeah well, you he's just know, like, standing yeah. there, you know, and I'm like oh man, and then his whole family walks up and I'm like, oh father I, don't, I really don't know if you know, so we walk out, and I, I said, I'm not, I have to listen. So I turned around, and I said, hey, um, uh, God wants me to come up and pray for, for, uh, what did I say, for your limp. I can't remember. And it was just in general, because I, I had a strike of a little bit of fear when I walked up. I didn't want to be that specific, you know, what if he was like, well, it's not my head. And I just said, and he said, sure. And totally didn't think this guy would say sure. But he said, sure, you know, so I prayed for him. And um, he said, yeah, I'm going in for hip surgery, or hip rep And I was like, wow. anyways, and I said, look, I, I didn't want to sound really strange to you, but that is the specific thing 
that and and it, and I could tell it kind of blew him away a little bit. But how much more would it have blew him away? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it just it just drives it home even more when you. It would have let him see the power of God. That oh, listen to that more. specific even more, yeah. But I mean, he was still moved, and it was still. Good. But to to listen, and if it's specific and it's just radiant specific in your brain. Yeah. We have to find creative ways to word these things because God gives us things all the time, but we don't always know how to word it. So as individuals, we have to. I, I even write down from time to time. Okay, how could I even start a conversation? How could I practice this? Because it's awkward. It's socially awkward and weird to do this sometimes. But it doesn't have to be. Each of us have our own little ways that we can develop and make it to where we can easily minister and start a conversation and bring power into somebody's life and let them feel God. Awesome. Go ahead. Hey, I, I want to uh, tell you about Susan. Okay. This, uh, she comes to prayer on the Monday, Wednesday, to Friday. And uh, she goes by this house, okay. and this little gal is out starting her car, getting ready to go to work. Um, almost every time she goes by. So mm-hmm. this week, she stopped and talked to the gal. And Asked if she could pray with her, and the gal broke down crying. Mm. It was a real moment, I guess. I wasn't there. Wow. But, uh, yeah, so. God's doing Jesus, stuff in our family. God's been telling her to pray for this yeah. lady. She's been praying for her. Yeah. And then uh, this week, she talked to her, and uh, had quite a moment. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is good. This is good. Hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray that we come back next week with even more testimony. We are a part of your kingdom. Lord God, we want to impact like Jesus did. We want to make a difference. Please, dear God, be huge us. Help us to know you so well that we would know how to step the way you would step, how to speak the way you would speak, how to do what you would do. Thank you, dear Lord. I am so privileged to be a part of this family. People that are out there praying for people. People that are helping kids, people that are helping each other, people that are growing, people that are bonding in family. What a privilege to be a part of this family, to be a part of this kingdom. Thank you, dear God, for that. God, I pray that you bless the rest of this service. Give me the words that you would speak. Help me to walk in the Spirit in these moments going forward. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have more stories, more testimony. It, oh, it's so good. Um, I got a, there was a guy at a gas pump that was, he pulled up so I could park, he could have parked and gone inside, but he pulled up so that I could get gas. So I went inside and I said, he was going to buy a candy bar or something, and when I went in to pay, I said, hey, can I buy that for me? He said, no. He was good. And I was like, okay, thanks for pulling up for me, I'd be more than willing to buy your thing, you know. He's like, ah, it's okay. And God said, heartache. Um, this man had heartache. Just, just, and I was like, okay, all right, and I, I walked away. I, did my thing, walked away, and as he came out, God brought him to me. He kind of looked over at me, and I looked over at him as I was standing there, and he kind of did the, you know, kind of the little walk over to me. Yeah. So God had to help me out on that one. Um, he's been a Sunday school teacher for 15 years, love the Lord. His wife, a few years ago, had been, uh, she had Alzheimer's, and it was getting worse and worse. She disappeared from time to time. He's trying to help her. And she ended up saying things in one of her episodes to the church family, and they just they just cut him completely out of all fellowship, all church, all everything. Took away all of his ministry, took away everything he did, and he tried to explain. They wouldn't even listen. And I don't know his. He said, she said, I don't. The man was broken. It was bad. He travels and teaches at universities about the amazing. He teaches about science and how. He teaches creation science in a non-creation environment without calling it creation science because that's Ooh. what God gave him to do. And he's just he's just hurting and just in pain. And he just started going to another church a few months ago. And so I started sharing with him and prayed over him. Oh man. God is so good. Alright, I got another one for you guys. Um, down in Texas, there was a gentleman named William Henn. Uh, Benny Hen's nephew, who uh, did ministry with Benny Hen for a long time and uh, was just completely void of relationship with God. He 
seeing people healed, healed, right? And completely avoid a relationship with God. And uh, Todd White, some of his team, and some of the people he knew scooped this guy up and uh, ministered to him for years. And he's one of Todd White's right hand guys that helps him out. So he gives his testimony when I was down in Texas back in February, January, about knowing ministry but not knowing God. And that's been a lifelong struggle of mine because I grew up in ministry life. So us ministry kids, we have to fight for knowing God outside of ministry. That's us. So it was just really, really powerful. That was in Texas. I'm in Iowa on vacation. Guess who sits down at the table next to me? No way. William Man. And his team. Oh, wow. Yeah. I couldn't eat another bite. <laughs> it destroyed wow. me. God had been asking me to step out. God had been asking me to step out. God had been asking me to step out. And then Amy walks and sits down, and Amanda's like, What? What is it? She's looking over at that table, and I said, Amanda, that's the guy that gave that testimony. I was like, She said, You gotta be kidding. I said, Nope, that's him. She's like, are you sure? <laughs> you know the whole, I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger walking down the streets in Wyoming. You know, whatever. You think you know somebody famous. But I just, I went to the site, pulled up, said, look. And sure enough. So when we let them order, let them do the thing, and then when I got done, I was able to get up. And I felt like God wanted me to try to encourage him. So everybody was just constantly barraging him with questions at that table. And so I went up, I said, hi, you don't know me. Uh... I said, and there was like six or eight people sitting around. I said, it's William, right? And he's like, yeah. I said, you gave a testimony uh, in Texas a few months back. And it just destroyed me. And I wanted to just say thank you for that. And he's like, wait, were you at the church service today? I was like, no, I was, I don't, I don't know what service you're talking about. He's like, how do you, what? And I said, well, where, he said, where do you live? I said, Wyoming. <laughs> and he's like, why are you here? I said, apparently to talk to you. <laughs> I don't know. But I, got to, I just got to encourage him and thank him. And You might not see how that was God speaking to me, but it was God speaking to uh, me. Yeah. Now here's the thing. There are moments in each of your lives where you're sitting there going about your life, yeah. and God speaks to you in a way that somebody else might not get. Like, what? That's just a coincidence. That's not a, that's not a God thing. Don't ever lose what... God is giving you. If God is giving you a nugget or a moment or something, and you know, well, maybe I don't want to share that because maybe it's just not. Some of the people might not see that as God. Don't. You have to be careful with who you share your testimonies with and some of that. But don't ever let Satan take away what God has given you. To me, it was more than miraculous because here I am trying to step out and grow in my gifting and push myself and. And there a guy shows up that gives that amazing testimony. It was unreal. All right, you guys can turn to Genesis chapter 1. Sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 to 8 prayer here at the church. 7 to 8 in the morning. If you get a chance, to come by. Do it. Come by. Pray. <coughs> While you're turning to Genesis, I bought this phone charger on my trip back yesterday. It says... On the side of it, it says, warning, may be potentially dangerous or cause death or cause cancer. What? <laughs> a phone chart. I was going to bring it to read it. And right next to that, it had the green symbol, like eco green. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. What is going on in the world? <laughs> the world is falling apart in the sea. Oh, man. Wow. Ugh. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to talk about intended purpose. And intended intentions. Um, we live in a meaningless world. People everywhere are striving for meaning. If you don't believe it, just drive around Rollins on prom night and see which fire. You see all, all sorts of people looking for meaning in every way possible. And we all know that we can find a little bit of happiness, a little bit of joy, a little bit of meaning temporarily in certain things. A nice cup of coffee. Mm. That's awesome. It doesn't last. We can find meaning in relationships with people. We can find meaning in a lot of different things. Entertainment, lots of different things can bring meaning in our lives. I really felt like God wants to 
Like God wants to provide meaning and blessing. Like God wants you to be satisfied. Right? Jesus talks about that we can have joy. And what I felt like God wanted me to do was to kind of go back to the beginning a little bit here. Because when a manufacturer makes something, let me get some objects. Let's just do this here. I need three objects, anything. So we can put an object in my hand. Any object. Throw it here, guys. Alright. We've got a pen. Yes. Thank you. I've always wanted a fork. <laughs> well, maybe not a fork. And a hat. There we go. Do you mind if I wear this? Alright. There we go. And we got another hat. <laughs> <laughs> so when a manufacturer makes something, he has an intended purpose for this, right? Is the intended purpose for this the same as the intended purpose for this? No. That's not, we're not, this is not going to work out very well. How about this? If I want to go start that forward, round it down the road a little bit, do I take this and jam it in the keyhole? <laughs> and try to, and, and, and it's not going to work, right? Meaning is derived from the intention of something. Because intention, intentionality gives identity. If I create a hat, and I say, this is a ball cap to be worn on a person's head, now it has an identity. From that identity, I can define its purpose. Right? If this is a ball cap, its purpose is not to be used yeah. to start a car. Its purpose is not to write on something. It's just not going to work. And when you look at the entire world around us, we see people trying to use these things to do this, and use this to do this, and make this happen to you. Ah, it's insanity sometimes. You can read about California, you can read about New York City, you can read about oh, you can read about overseas, you can read about all kinds of things. Watch the news. There's an identity crisis, and it leads to an emptiness because nobody knows who they're supposed to be or what they're supposed to do. If you know who you are and what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do, now you have a purpose. That's right. And when you actually do the purpose, yeah. Yeah. it becomes meaningful. That's right. If you try to force things outside of purpose, you really don't have much meaning. It just, it just isn't there. How am I doing with this hat? Are we good? We like it? So in Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to keep these keys and this pen for a little bit here. For fun. In Genesis chapter 1, God, so as I got thinking about this, God was like, okay, I want you to take people back to their, back to meaning, back to identity, back to purpose for a little bit. Because once we know who we are, we can act out of that place. Right? So it's like, okay, where do you want me to go? And the Lord said, go back to the very, 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 very beginning before the fall of man. And let's just start there. And we're like, okay, you've got it. So we ended up in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 28. I'm going to read this verse here. And this is right after God created man. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. When God created us, He did it with a He did it for a reason. We have, to, we have to get rid of that, that concept that we exist for no reason. We have to get rid of the concept because it's everywhere. It's everywhere that, that people think they just are a cog in the scientific machine and a lot of that comes from evolutionary teaching and some of that. But God created us with an intended use. Think about before. Think about before there was man. So God's going to create a man. You wouldn't just come up with this for no reason. You would come up with this for a reason. That's right. You would give it an identity. Yep. You, from that identity, you could be like, yeah, if you wear it, that's your purpose. Because mm -hmm. identity, purpose, meaning. Now, it has meaning. Because it's being used according to its purpose and plan. Yes, exactly. There's a lot of things in this verse. And God blessed them and said to them, Be part of our identity is being fruitful, part of our identity is multiplying, 
Part of identity is filling the earth. Part of identity is subduing the earth. Part of our identity is to have dominion. There's a lot of things here. I thought, okay, God, well, I'll just start with fruitful. And God said, whoa, 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 back up to the beginning of the verse. I said, all right. He's, and I read it. And it says, and God blessed them. And God said to them, and God said, right there. And I said, where? I don't see it. I see the next part where it says, be fruitful and multiply. Like, that's our identity. We're supposed to be fruitful. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But step back and read it again. And then I had to read this thing. And then he hit you with it like a brick. God blessed them. We have a lot of people in religious circles who twist blessing to God, right? They twist that. I'm here to tell you, God intended for the people He created to be a blessed people. Yes. Now, right off the bat, there's lots of red flags with that because we, we look at our lives sometimes we go, I'm not blessed. I love this hat. God is good all the time. It's yours. It's mine. <laughs> I'm not going to steal it from your brother. The word blessing comes from the word uh, Hebrew word rock. It means the opposite of curse. It means to set in motion blessing or to cause blessing. See, when God created mankind, yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to tie it to, to to me and my kids. Okay, we can all relate to that better. I think that's a great idea. Before you have kids, then you have kids. Is your intention ever anything but blessing? Is your intention ever? I'm going to have children. I'm going to grow family to enslave them. <laughs> Is that? I'm sure some kids, teenagers, probably think that that's the intention. <laughs> but you know the truth in your heart of hearts. You don't have. A family? To be oppressive to them? That's not the intention. You don't have children and go through all the right, nine months of labor. That's, that's not all done so that you can beat up on them or make them be your slip. Why would it be any different with God? Before there was man, then God created man. And in that moment where he created them, the Hebrew word Barak, to start blessing, to push blessing, to set it in motion, to make it happen. So if I'm outside of blessing, either something's wrong, or I'm not realizing and seeing the blessing that's all around me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Kind of an embarrassing thing. We were walking through the uh, nursing home with all our Heard school flock of children. Um, we're going to the nursing home. I left there changed because people are like, Oh, look at your kids. They're so beautiful. Oh, can I just hold them? Can I just touch them? Yeah. See, I didn't see that. But I I know it's awesome to have kids. I know that's a blessing, right? But I saw it in a totally different light. My mind wanted to focus on. You know, the dirty diapers, and we were up all night feeding babies, and everyone. You see how my mind space, and your mind space, can focus on different things. I feel like God says, man, we focus all our mind space on the fact that we don't feel blessed. But God literally created us blessed. That's right. So somewhere in here, we've got this disconnect. It's in there somewhere. And I'm going to try to dig in and find it. I'm going to try to help us all see it. I know for me, that rest home helped a little bit, right? It helped me go, oh, it's not that, oh my goodness, and now, I get, it's just, oh. When God reveals something to you, when he gives you a revelation of how blessed you are in a certain area, it's, it's awesome. It's unbelievable. I got it down some areas that we are blessed. Um, God, his original intentions were to bless us with the peace of the soul. 
You can just hear that as words that just fly out of your body in one ear and out the other. You can. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Mm -hmm. yep. I'll tell you, I'll be honest, my mind, will, and emotions are all over the place. Wow. The last month and this next month, of what, what i got going on in life, and the levels mm -hmm. of stress and the travel, and 1,800 miles of craziness, and kids, and business, and work, and relationships, and doing the church, and helping out with my family, and growing the projects at my house. And God intended for you to be blessed with peace in your mind. Hey, That's right. That's what he wants. He didn't make kids and go, hmm, I'm going to mentally abuse and torture you <laughs> your whole life. Now, sometimes we feel like, yeah. God, are you torturing me right now? Are you abusing me right now? Because this is not sane right now. And that's your fault. I've been there. I've done that. I have said those words. But his original intentions for us, our identity is to be at peace. That's right. When you have family reunions, fun stuff happens sometimes. <laughs> Regardless of how above board and you try to be. We were just having a couple of tough moments. Um, I was laying in bed one night and God destroyed me with Psalm 23. I don't even know why I started quoting it, but I was just laying there quoting Psalm 23. And it says, He restores my soul. Yeah. And so many times I go to Netflix to restore my soul. Or I go to the grill and cook some burgers and try to look out on the view and restore my soul. Sometimes I try to read a book or listen to music to restore my soul. Sometimes I just try to, you know, sometimes we think we just need to get along. I can just eat alone. Yeah. Then I would have a restored soul. You might get there. All I know is that David, who had the plate, the entire nation of Israel, in the middle of battle with all kinds of issues, says, oh, yeah, he's the one that restores the soul. Uh, that was a revelation that blew me away this last week. <coughs> His original intentions were to bless us with a perfect personal father. In one ear and out the other. How many of you wish your father could have been a little more perfect, a little more personal? Yeah. <laughs> Happens, right? Yeah. Oh, he is that to you. That's right. If you let him. He didn't make you, create you as your father, and then intend for you to be alone without a dad. I want to know, do we stop, like, like, we stop and pray, right? We stop and read our Bibles. Do we stop and just be like, hey, Dad. Yes. Daddy time. Let's go. Let's talk about this stressful situation. What do you think? I am, it's just destroying me. There is nothing wrong with doing that. No. Stopping and being like, I have a perfect father. I'm going to act that way. I'm going to live like it. I'm going to stop and make yeah. that happen somehow. Yeah. yeah. Important. Adam and Eve walked around with God in the Garden of Eden. God wants to walk up again. You want to go for a walk? Go for a walk. Walk with God. Honey, can you watch the kids? I need to go for a walk with Daddy. Because I am mad. I am frustrated. I am angry. I don't know what's going on in my life right now. Everything seems upside down. Me and Daddy need to go. Look. Go for it. Do a Daddy walk. Take your kids on a Daddy walk. I don't know. His original intentions were to be a perfect father for you. Amen. His original intentions were to bless us with a personal friend so that we would never be lonely. Adam was lonely. And God made him not lonely. God gave him Eve. He took her whole hands. It's a good thing. When God made you, he didn't intend for you to be lonely. That's not his intention. I know some of us are at life stages where we don't have a partner. And I know that's how it is sometimes. And I know that that's difficult. But what I want, I don't know how else to say it other than to say, we've got a created man. He, he intended for us to have family. Mm -hmm. And 
and you have to do that right. You can't just rush out and marry somebody. And you can't, you have to do that right. You understand what I'm saying? But it, it, is, it is a good thing when we find someone that we can bear our soul to, when we find someone that we can hold through the struggles. That is awesome. That is what he wanted and intended. It is not wrong to seek and to strive for a partner. That is not a bad thing. That is a great thing. Do it God's way and go for it. And inside that purpose, you will be blessed with meaning and abundance of life. Mm. Thank you, Lord. This is so good. I just, I just love that. Adam's lonely. He creates Adam. And he's like, Adam looks lonely. We're going to fix this. And he makes Eve for him. What a good dad! Amen. He makes us, he looks at us and he goes, oh, wow, let's, let's, let's help that. I don't want them to be lonely. That's not their intention. That's not my intention to have them lonely. At certain stages in life, it's not necessarily a person of the opposite gender to which you're married that is your partner. Sometimes, fathers and sons can be close buddies um, and help each other. There's all kinds of relationships. Yeah, relationships. My mother took in my grandmother when she started having Alzheimer's and some of that. And that relationship was just unreal. Helped my grandmother so much. That doesn't intend for people to be alone. <laughs> Say, but I'm alone sometimes. I understand. We're going to get to some of the reasons why we don't feel blessed here in a minute. God's original intentions were to bless us by including us as a part of something much larger <coughs> than ourselves. I am proud to be an American. Yeah. Amen. I love my country. Amen. I this is my home. I will fight for this country. Amen. I am a part of something bigger than myself. Amen. Yeah. See how that works? Yeah. Kingdom. I am proud to be a part of this family. Amen. Together we glorify God. Together we put light out there and we push darkness away. We are the salt of the earth. I am proud of that. I love that. I will fight for this family. Okay. See the ownership there? Yeah. Just like we're proud of our country. Okay? Amen. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm not blessed. You're a part of something. Yeah. Whether you see it or not. Yeah. And if you don't see it, just take five minutes and just, okay, God, let me see it. I don't see it. So, yeah. After I sit here for five minutes, and you show me how I am bigger than just one person. I'm connected to something so much bigger, so much greater. That's right. Blessing. Now what we might do is we might not even see that at all. We might go weeks without even acknowledging that in our cranium. Because what's taken the place of that is who knows what. We all have our own pity parties and troubles. and But it's okay to step back to our identity. That's right. I'm American. That makes sense. I'm part of a family that glorifies God yeah. with everything we are on the earth. I'm connected right now. You know that there's other men all over the world speaking and preaching right now? Yep, right. that's right. I'm not the only one standing up speaking and preaching. I am part of something huge. Yes, right. There are people taking the offering. There's people teaching Sunday school classes all over the world. That's there's right. people on Monday morning going into work and kneeling down at their jobs <coughs> and praying. <laughs> Millions, I don't know, yeah. all at the same moment praying, you're a part of something greater. Yeah. And you might want to focus on the bump you're in, and I know bumps aren't fun. But take a minute. God made you be blessed. Step out of the crazy for a second and yeah. shoot. Whoa. Good word. I've gone up and prayed before up on like Cherokee Ridge. I love to go up there and pray in my truck. And I've seen it moments like in my mind's eye, other people praying all over the country, like pastors and leaves up on mountaintops. It's just weird. Just in high places, praying over their city, praying over their family, whatever you want to call it. And it's cool because in that, I never connected that way before with other people. And God's like, there are more than just you. You're a part of something. Great. Who was it? The, one of the prophets. Elijah. Yeah, he was all down in the dumps, wasn't he? I know and God said there was five, five thousand. What was the number? Seven. Seven thousand? Yeah. 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 He was looking at the 
Yep. That's the doo doo. Not alone. Isn't it? Mm. His original intentions were to bless all of mankind with the entire planet Earth and each individual with their own corner of the Earth somewhere. Isaac, would you pull up uh, Psalms, chapter 115, verse 16? Psalms, chapter 115, verse 16. Did you know God gave the Earth to us? This is something we don't... Sometimes we think, we drive by a big ranch, or we drive by some place somewhere, we're like, well, if I only had two or three hundred acres of good cattle ground, then I'd actually have a corner of this earth. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I get that way too. I'm like, man, if I can only get this or this or whatever, then I'd have, then I'd actually, it'd actually be visible. It wouldn't be like my speck of the earth is this little tiny corner. I was in Pizza Ranch two nights ago. You ever been to Pizza Ranch? God loves Pizza Ranch. <laughs> I'm not saying this has to be you. I'm not saying you have to make a pizza ranch in back, but every song was a Christian song. In their entryway, they said, this business is dedicated to the glory of God. Yeah. Right when you walk in the front door. It's, okay. The earth was given to us, not Satan. The earth is ours. Yep. We get to take ground. That's right. And sometimes it's actual dirt, like Pete's Ranch has done. 200 restaurants, we're talking to the, the manager. 200 restaurants now, glorifying God. Well, that's cool. Awesome. Sometimes we take the ground. Sometimes it's more like spiritual ground that we take. However, this planet is ours. When you're born into it, you're blessed with it already. God didn't, I don't have my kids and expect to never bless them. I don't know. I'm, part of what I'm doing is to help them build their own thing. I don't have children and expect to just not give them anything. I want to teach them and give them the tools and life to where they have their own corner of this thing. Yeah. This is a great verse. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, yeah. but the earth he has given to men. When I heard that, I was like, uh... That's interesting. That explains a lot of things. The earth is ours. We have to be careful what we do with the earth. I'm not a tree hugger. Yeah. I'm not an environmentalist. But we, we care. This is our planet. You know, your business that you work at, that's your corner, yeah. that's your piece, your desk, your cubicle, your classroom that you teach in, your office, that's your corner as well as your house. Yeah. And if you own it, the land that it's on. And God intended for you to have it if you don't. That is part of God's original intention for mankind is to have the earth. Sometimes we are more blessed than we think. If you read Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 through 30, kind of right where we were at, the whole thing is about God giving the earth to mankind. His original intentions were to bless us physically, not just with the things we need, but with the things we wanted. This one's tough. This one's tough. So I teach my kids all the time restraint, right? I teach them restraint. They're out of restraint, you can't just have everything we want. God has created us. When he made the garden of Eden, this, I get this picture, it's a giant garden full of fruit trees, right? Enjoy the variety of these trees. Don't eat that one. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat that one. But it's okay for you to try fruit from different trees. It would be a cruel parent that only gave their kids just what they needed. This is, this is all you need. You have one cup of rice every day. That's all you get. That's not God's intentions for us. That's not who we are. God actually, so we have this poverty mentality in our country where we think that we should beat ourselves up like monks and not have anything. Mm -hmm. No. When God blesses, take it and as he wants you to use it for the kingdom, use it for the kingdom. 
Abraham was super wealthy, and God made him wealthy. And he used it to push the gospel. Yeah. He used it to change. Job. Job was super wealthy. Mm-hmm. God destroyed him, took everything away from him. And when it was done, God left him with nothing. No, he left him about says with twice as much as he had. Why would God do that? Because he's a loving father, and yes, he's not just going to give us everything we want sometimes. Sometimes we have to work for it, sometimes we have to go through tests and trials and issues, right? But his intentions are to give us what we want. That's free will. Yeah. Mm. So many good things. I got one more written down here. His original intentions were to bless us with free will, to create and design. So many of you are artists, so many of you are designers, musicians, uh, you have your niche, your thing. God blessed us. When God created us, He blessed us with that. God didn't create us to not be blessed, to not create and to not design. He didn't create us to fit in a box. He created us with giftings. He created us with the ability to go for it in life, in ministry, in work, at home, at play. Part of our identity is blessed. And we, we have to understand that. Sometimes we don't think we're blessed because of trials. Trials and testing and temptation. Those are three different T's. Okay? Easy to remember that way. Trials. Sometimes we think, I'm not blessed. I'm in a trial. Read James chapter 1. The trial is intended to make you better than you are. Yeah, yeah. You'll start here in your trial and you'll end up here. But you got to have faith. you got to get through it. It's not easy. It's tough. But it's not that you're not blessed. That's right. Sometimes we have uh, testing. God tested lots of different people all through Scripture. God tested Abraham with his son Isaac on the altar. God tested all kinds of people. Sometimes we look and we're like, this is me, right? Okay, vulnerable. Here we go. I don't want to preach today. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And God says, uh huh. Boom. Okay. We all do that in everything. In our homes with our relatives, and church here with different things that we do around church, in our jobs with what we got to do with jobs. We all do that. Yep. You know, I test my kids. Some people think it's cruel to test your kids. We step into school, they get tested there all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem being like, hmm, I'm going to leave my plate of cookies on this coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch cookies. I step back. And then I'll come back a minute later and see if they're gone. If they're not gone, guess what that allows me to do as a father now? I can trust them. And usually, I just bless them. Because they passed the test. You had your strength. You did so good. Would you guys like a cookie? Here's half for you. Half for you. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. We look at our testing and we go, God is a meanie. He's a bully. He, he probably doesn't even exist. And we take this to this extreme. And we don't even realize that sometimes, goodness, He's just trying to be able to bless you more. That's what He, sometimes that's what that's all about. If, if you're a person, that God can actually trust? That's right. Oh, way cool. If God can trust, I want to be a person that God can trust. Yep. And I've passed some tests, and I've wiped out on other tests. But what I'm not going to do is be like, oh, we're just not blessed people. Our identity is not blessed. Yeah. As Christians, we're just slaves, head bowed, shackled. Now there is a place for serving God that is out of that heart of love. Yeah. And we'll get to that mm-hmm. in the coming months. But but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. Okay, what do we do? We did testing, the trials. Ah, this one was crazy to me. Jesus <coughs> is led by Holy Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted. Yeah. We, we get into some theology, we have some uh, <laughs> Stand a little sensitive here. Alright? Going through a temptation and coming out victorious is like a test. It's very similar. 
Same thing with kids. You can just relate it right back to your own children. They have kids. The cookies on the table. That's kind of a temptation. And I'm just going to see how they do for a minute. I'll tell you what I believe. I do not believe that God literally himself tempts us. I believe the devil tempts us. And God allows us yeah. at times to be in proximity to the tempter yeah. to where the tempter can try. Yeah. Right? But God will never allow us to be oh, I don't know this. tempted beyond there we go. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. God doesn't want us, God will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we can actually overcome. Beyond what we can handle. So here we are, blessed as can be. The Bible says so. This is even before the fall. Then you have the fall, then you have Jesus, and now comes Holy Spirit, just living and alive in us with power. I mean, there's so much more we could get into from the point of Christ going forward. But just, just in the blessing mentioned in Genesis, just in that, we're blessed people. If we don't see it, it's because we've got the brain space to focus on the problem. That's right. I know that's not easy. <laughs> I know that's tough. I do, you got that picture of the back of my car? We'll end with this here. Intentions. When God created us, He created us with a specific intention that decides our identity. From that identity, we have a purpose. Where's the hat again for a minute? I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Alright, so that's the back of my car yesterday as we're driving across the country. Let's see, can we go down a little bit with the picture? There we go, perfect. All right. So somewhere, a manufacturer said, I'm going to take a piece of steel, and another piece of steel, and hook another piece of steel onto it, and make two little bumps so that two bicycles can be put on the back of a car. And be carried around. And they gave it an identity. They gave it a purpose. This is, you're supposed to create two bikes. So there's Reed. We can get three <laughs> I can start that car with this pen and expect that everything will be fine. So I strap on three bikes and they are dangling out there. And we we went 900 miles to Iowa and I looked at it and I was like, oh, I hope we make it home. <laughs> we came 900 miles back. And uh, I took that yesterday morning in somewhere, Grand Island, Nebraska. And it's, uh, I don't know how much longer it's going to last. I'm not sure. Somebody's using it outside of its intended purpose. <coughs> Somebody's using it outside of its identity. And because of that, it's about to become meaningless. Yeah. It's going to fall. And when it falls, right. it's not only going to break itself. Yeah. When it falls, I take down my bikes. And those bikes are going to bounce up and down on the interstate, take out a semi. <laughs> it's it's going to be bad, but it's, right? So it's super important that we don't use things wrong. And as Christians, it's super important that we figure out who we are, yeah. who we were created to be. Yeah. What I've told you today on Genesis is a general, this is why I created all mankind. As we go further, Jesus further defines Christians, specifically. And then it gets ex even more exciting, because you as individuals have unique identities that are different from the person sitting next to you. Yeah. All right? These callings on our lives, these unique identities. But we've got to step back, and we've got to zoom in on what God originally intended. Yeah. I don't exactly know how to end this. Isaac, let's do this. Um, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to dismiss it. And then what I'm going to do is my wife here. She's a baby. Okay. Um, I'm going to, me and EJ are going to pray over anybody that wants to have realized blessing. I'm not going to pray that a truck breaks down in front of your house with millions of dollars in gold coins. You can listen to Okay, there's a mis 
There's a disconnect somewhere there in the spiritual world. That's not what we're going to pray for. We're going to pray that God allows you to see what you already have. For anybody who wants that, we'll just form a line. Me and Janelle will stand up here. If you're good with that, we'll just pray for, we'll just pray for people. Yeah. Um, so I'll pray. I'll end the service. Isaac, you can play a couple songs of music at half volume or something like that. If you need to go, head on out. Have a great week. Be blessed. Um,